So yesterday I went through and cleaned up the design and I'm actually printing it now. And I'll just go through some of the changes I've done on this latest revision versus the last one. Uh, let me bring up a split screen. So overall, the the one on the right is the new one, the one on the left is the old one. Uh, yeah, a lot of it's like refining and uh, thickening up a lot of pieces and just finding anything that is that was a potential, a potential breaking spot is kind of alleviated now. So for instance, over here, this area, like I thought that this was probably gonna break at some point. Over here now, it's just like this big giant mass. And you now over here, there was, there was the potential of a bit of intersection issues. So now it's, everything's aligned to like the axes that it rotates on. And, Let's see what else. The overall length is also increased. So what I've done is the uh, distance between uh, this, the roller and the pivot. So let's just say that this is the pivot over here. Uh, this this distance is increased on the old one, uh, and that just helps with a bit of the precision. So as as this one rotates over, it doesn't get as close. It still gets very close, but uh, the precision is not as much of an issue if it's if it's slightly out through do it like printing and whatnot. Um, what else we got here? Yeah, the rollers. So yeah, well, everything's everything's a lot thicker. So the width of here is a lot more, especially this side. This side was a little bit thinner. Now it's just like this big bulky thing now. And uh, bearings are also moved. So bearings on this one were on, uh, I guess you call these the arms. Now the, now the, ro the bearings are on the actual cam itself. And it just makes this whole area a lot more thicker and yeah, I think that's just probably the proper way of doing it. Um, the rubber bands are a bit different. Probably won't make much of a difference, but see the, uh, over here, if I open up this part, so just the way this is designed and then, well, thinking about how to assemble it, uh, the way it was originally done, you wouldn't be able to put the center core into this piece. So what I've done is I've split it. So if I, if I hide one of these pieces, so now you print it in two parts and it gets screwed together through these ones here. And I've only put two in there. I think that should be fine because uh, you're gonna have you're gonna have those two plus the the main bearings are press fit in, so uh, that's gonna be joined together nicely. And then also here where the cam goes in, that's gonna go in. And I I split it along here because if I split this one down here, it's gonna be like. Mm -hmm the threads are never going to hold and this is just going to break. So, and I don't want to split, uh, I don't want to split a line down here because the, uh, so this mass is like, this is like structurally what's holding it together. And like, if I cut one of those in half, it's going to be a huge problem. So cutting it down the middle, uh, that's, you know, there's not a lot of material there anyway. So it's not, it's not as if it's going to matter that much. Let me close this. Go back to here. And let me see what else I'm missing. Yeah, so a lot of the design is just a lot more simplified now. So this one is like, as I'm going through and building it, I'm, I'm constantly changing the shape of things. And what ends up happening in uh, in tools such as this 
is uh, your your features, the the things that you use to assemble everything or design everything, they become unnecessarily too complex. So generally what I do is after I'm happy with the design, I'll go back and I'll take, for instance, like a part like this and uh, design it again using a lot less features. So I've gone through and, and have done that to all the parts and where where I can add extra mass, for instance, like this area over here, I've done that. Um, I think the, uh, yeah, so like these pivots here, uh, I don't think they're gonna break at all. I think if anything were to break, probably would be uh, this roller for uh, what is this the yaw or for for this axis uh, because the the bearing is put on the side like that it's gonna uh, it's gonna push this part down and it's probably gonna crack down the center here so I've tried to do my best to thicken up areas such as this so like if we compare it to the original. So this is just a straight linear, and this one has a bit of a curve just to add a little bit of extra material. And then also same same over here. So if we compare this one. This one kind of has like a, a teardrop shape at the end of it. Just so like just so it's not gonna crack there, or hopefully not. Um, for this one, I could probably put another bearing on this side and that might help with uh, just the load on it. It's not gonna be, it's not gonna be like trying to twist this shape. It's gonna like this whole shape is just gonna be under compression, which would be a lot stronger. Um, I would have to probably cut into this a little, <coughs> cut into this a little bit and then adjust the, uh, the path where the roller goes on. Uh, just because this section here is probably going to get in the way. <coughs> yeah. um, on this side here, I don't really have that option. Like, I could put another bearing and uh, double out the bearings there. Uh, but I don't think that's going to really help. Uh, that might help if the, the material there is not... Uh, like, if it's getting compressed a lot. Uh, but structurally over here it's it's not going to do it any good um let me see what else i'm missing um let me just rotate this back yeah the only other thing is i'm using some robinson heads here and it's just because this is what i have on hand so uh, in the future i'll i'll change all that to metric stuff but for this first test, it should be fine. And I, I think this is about it. So yeah, let me know what you think. And I'm printing this now. So the next video, I'll have it all assembled and uh, go through what works and what doesn't.